Oh, if you can catch me, you can't catch In me. This can't box. catch you. Okay. Foxy. What are you, the magic dragon? Catch no, you. I So, Scooter. Oh, baby. <laughs> we here? We We're here. here. You in the right direction. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of GPS Extended. That's right. <laughs> Do we have a read today? No, oh, yeah. but I think there is something we need to talk about. Final play. It looks like barring a penalty. Prescott over the middle of the turpin. Gets smoked right away. And that'll do it. The 49er. And on the last play, Cowboys needed a miracle. Didn't have it on this thing. Whoa. The greatest to... play. Wait, we don't was. have a read? Isn't it in the description? We got a read. We got oh, a we read. Oh, we got a read. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> from now on, when I'm feeling down or I'm feeling depressed, <clears throat> I'm going to fire up that clip and just feel better. Like, just so much better. What was supposed to happen on that play? Scooter, have you determined what? Ball's supposed to go far. Yeah. <laughs> what like, was I understand the design? what they were trying to do. What? You understand it. Yeah, because, you know, I think, I think of plays like that also. You know, just like trick plays, things like that. I've got a creative offensive mind like that. I think they were trying to set up a screen <laughs> that would have then been thrown to the other side, but it just never, right. never materialized. You still in, boys? I mean, I do have one question for you, Scooter. Do you think that's the last play Zeke Elliott plays as a Cowboy? Ooh, okay, loaded. so if we're just going to jump straight into the Cowboys. 100% is last play yeah. center. <clears throat> no, no, I mean, <laughs> they, they've had a hard time replacing that. Center. Tyler Biadish has been injured. Trent Frederick has retired. But I'm going to say, yeah. Zeke Elliott, with the way he feasts, he can bulk up the offensive line pretty quickly. Ooh. Here's the thing. Okay, All right. with this Let's loss, Ooh, someone got a fitty. There's going to 69. be a lot of hard questions the Cowboys are going to have to answer. Okay, a lot of hard questions. Zeke, I'm on the forefront. What do we do with Zeke? Zeke's already intimated that he's willing to take a pay cut so that's so nice we're just gonna see let's see how things play out before we make any rash decisions as far as the game goes um see what had happened was <laughs> remember when he said that brock purdy would throw more interceptions than dak mm -hmm. i remember and, well here's the uh. thing <laughs> he Trayvon Diggs had an interception right in his head. There were so many things we could have done to win that game that we like did that not do. So pick. many plays <laughs> that literally slipped through our hands. We have no one to blame but ourselves and management for trading Amari Cooper in the preseason. Because, bro, look at every team remaining. Look at the talent they have. When C.D. Lamb is our only receiver who's producing in the whole game, there's a problem. There's a problem. So we're going to have to make a lot of hard decisions this offseason. But again, I think a lot of things are doable. Look at what – look at the teams remaining. Look at how they supported their quarterbacks. Uh, the Eagles went out and they go get A.J. Brown. They don't trade away their number one. They go get a number one. Well, so you have to remember, just... though, they panicked at the time of the cap. They did technically keep Michael Gallup. So do you get rid of Michael Gallup to keep Amari Cooper? A lot of people would say yes. <laughs> a lot of people Joking would on say his yes own words. <laughs> were, were you oh, really okay. saying that? Um, but a lot. If you, if you had to go back and do it again, a lot of people would say keep Amari Cooper over Michael Gallup. There are some people yeah, that believe we got Michael Gallup at a discount. So it's just, mm -hmm. it's going to be very hard. This offseason. Speaking of I discounts. If I could find a way. <laughs> Yo, there's only four teams that remain. We know which one's not there. No. <laughs> I think there. none of our teams are there anymore. I got it. Nobody. American folklore. In terms of winning the West. 
<laughs> but they're not in this this the games this weekend. Right now, though, our friends over at DraftKings with our code clickbait. G clickbait. They're gonna give you two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly. Ooh. Instantly. If you bet five dollars, at least five dollars on either NFL playoff game, you can do either one. The NFC or the AFC one. Uh, and um, if you're wondering what you could be doing with that 200 and bonus bets, well, why don't you stack some bets with the same game parlays, multiple mm-hmm. bets in the same game. Okay. Like which team's going to win by how much will they run a weird, dumb, stupid trick play to end the game. That is going to mm-hmm. be completely ineffective and won't work in a million years, especially after the opposing team sees what you're doing and calls a timeout. <laughs> and then oh, really totally prepared that. for it. Okay, I got out of hand there. But if you use our code clickbait when you sign up at DraftKings, yes. link in the description after you download the app, you bet five dollars on either of these games, at least five dollars, you're gonna get two hundred dollars in bonus bets instantly. Bye. <laughs> Bye <laughs> disclaimer. What where's the disclaimer? Oh, where is it? What disclaimer? It's on the screen. Here, try oh, try. we're small. Oh, there um, we go. Yeah, I was wondering why it wouldn't go on. Huh. Now, uh, don't we have a punishment to get no, to? <clears throat> no, but I think there are some words that a certain guy needs to eat. You have to make it a JPEG. Yeah, I'm going to screenshot it real quick. And okay, just- the 49ers, Danny Day, you have lost your mind. There's no way the Cowboys are losing to the 49ers. Whoa, whoa. Someone clip it. Yeah. Okay, please just mm-hmm. keep the same energy. Because I don't want next week being some nonsense again. Oh, we're going up. We're going to. No, this is our year. It is the year of America's team. Again, Packers are out, buddy. They're out. And it's Jesus. Who is who is we prepared? Who is prepared? Because I'm coming with the heat. One of the best villain songs. Coming with the heat heat next week. I thought the heat were playing in Memphis next week. We're winning the game against the 49ers. And I'm going to be back next week. And I'm going to be saying the name of my team next week all stream long so oh. just get prepared oh. get prepared because it's happening next week great <laughs> We gotta keep that same energy, boys. Make sure you yes. keep that same energy. Exactly. Hey, man, right. you, you gotta Look, talk that crap. You gotta eat it too, man. Here's what I have to say. Here's what I have to say. If y'all watch the game, you saw what I saw. The 49ers did not beat us. We beat ourselves with absolute nonsense. We get the we get the ball. We get a turnover. We can't score a touchdown. We gotta kick a field goal. That's to me when we lost the game when we did not convert that touchdown that's, that's not four yards away. Yeah, I beat myself when the Cowboys Cavante lost. Turpin. That was... Turpin had two kickoffs. He could have housed, could have taken to the house. He chooses the wrong angle, runs and gets tackled by the kicker, runs into someone else. It's just like it was a myriad of nonsense that always seems to happen in the divisional game. For whatever reason. Because the Cowboys are a regular season team. I'm saying mm-hmm. that as someone who knows about my team, like they can't perform in the playoffs. Like, I mean, it, same it, as one recently. It, it's a thing. The thing is, it's like one play goes a different way. I would be talking a lot of trash. So that that's all I'm saying. Exactly. Yeah. I love talking in hypotheticals. That's, that's the best part of sports. My yeah, team yes. could have beat the Lions, just... but they didn't. So, but we if they get did, to, then we get wow. Oh yeah. Trap. Watch out, guys. Cowboys, because they couldn't make one play. <laughs> I actually played a much better game than I thought they would, but no oh, one's gonna remember boy. that. We no, gotta, I, gonna here's remember. my question. Oh wow! Oh, Relax, everyone out here. Relax. 
Yes. But here's what I want to know from you four guys, because I know how I feel about everyone on the Cowboys. I know what needs to happen. From an outside perspective, from a non-Cowboys fan, maybe even from a Cowboys hater perspective, what are your opinions on Dak Prescott? Because I know where I stand. Where do you guys stand on Dak after that performance? Tom. I'll, I can start. Yeah, no. Uh, I think he is a good quarterback. I think that his performance against the Buccaneers was a, probably one of his best that he's ever had. He had. Four touchdowns, didn't turn the ball over. I also think at the same time, I don't know if he's the guy that puts you over the top. Because now him and Tony Romo are 0-3 in the divisional round. And I think that the issue is not necessarily with Dak, because I think you can win. The problem is I think you need almost like a perfect scenario around him in order to put you over the top. You need an incredible offensive line. You need two running backs because the one you paid $90 million to can't do anything when your RB is supposed to be two, but is your RB1 Pollard goes down. I think your defense basically did more than enough to win that football game. Um, and so it comes down to your offense. And I think while CeeDee Lamb is the majority of your offense, you know, and letting Mari Cooper go for a fifth was a, definitely a big problem. I think with the amount of money that you're paying Dak, he's going to be expected to live up to those moments, and he's just not. So I don't think they're going to move off of him, but I don't even know what you begin to address to be like, yeah, we're going to run it back next year and we'll be in a better position because I think your division's going to get better. The Giants are going to get just get better. And I mean, this was their rebuild year and they wound up making it to the playoffs. Commanders, they'll do whatever they're doing. And the Eagles are a powerhouse team that are in the NFC Championship right now. So I don't know if Dak is going to bring you a Super Bowl in Arlington. Uh, I'll go next because I'm the cow. I'm the resident Cowboys hater. The thing is, like when you name the top quarterbacks in the league, right? Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. Even Lamar Jackson, maybe a little Aaron Rodgers, right? Uh, who else is in the uh, – Joe Burrow, okay. Where does Dak come up in that conversation? Late, late. Dak there's the top five, and then there's Dak somewhere below that so top five. And, and you cannot Can say that that's that inaccurate. Real quick? Can I just address that before you continue? Okay. That is so interesting that you – bring Josh Allen into this equation. And that's what a lot of people do. Josh Allen, top QB. Okay, well then if Josh Allen is a top QB, stats-wise, Dak's better than him. Dak stats is better wise, than Josh Allen. Kirk stats Cousins, stats-wise, stat wise is better so than both of them, right? About if we're if we're saying Josh Allen is a top QB and Dak has better stats than them, better win record, than Josh Allen in the last 13 games. Wins are not season. a QB stat. Wins are not. Yeah, wins are not. Not a even QB close, stat. buddy. No. Not even close. We well, Josh Allen, the, the bloom is coming off the rose with Josh Allen a little bit. That's all I have to say. If we're saying Josh weekend. Allen is a top QB. All right. But think about okay. Dak not if his numbers are better. But please continue. Okay. Who are the top two? Clearly, it's Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes. Like, that's that's there's no debating that, that those are the top two QBs in the league. Then there's that group of elite, and then there's Dak. Okay, let's be honest about that. Dak played really bad down the stretch, and he had that one game against Tampa. They made him look good, and then he went back to being like that against San Francisco, an elite defense. Yeah. Now, I mean, most quarterbacks are going to struggle against San Francisco, and we'll see what happens when uh, Jalen Hurts goes out there. My my thing is, is like, Dak, is he in the top? echelon of quarterbacks no and you need a guy that's there in the top three to to get you to the next level or see but that, Brock i just agree with that because Brock you get, Purdy goes out and yeah because that's what or, i'm saying you could have a brock purdy but the team like shanahan has designed that team so brock purdy jimmy garoppolo can thrive in it the cowboys aren't the cowboys threw so much money at offense and are expecting them to be an offensive minded team you got micah parsons who is a stud and like, you know, that's kind of been a little bit of the identity, but I feel like Jerry Jones has always wanted like an offensive team. It's like a high flying offense. And now that you don't have the pieces for that, you're still trying to run that offense. And like, that's why you were so hesitant to run with Pollard all year. Like, that's why you didn't like become like a ground game team, but I don't, but I, it doesn't make sense to me, but I feel like that's the way that here's the stats I was referring to. I was trying to find it okay. in their last right. 13 games. Okay. 
So forget wins and losses because you said wins are not a QB record not. or whatever. Mm-hmm. QBR, Dak, 98.3 versus Josh Allen, 84.5. 28 to 21 touchdowns, 3,264 yards to 2,920 yards. 16 interceptions to 13 interceptions. So it's like Josh Allen is a top QB. Well, what's Dak then? Because he's better than Josh Allen in QBR and the whole. So it's just like it's interesting. To well, see people's perspectives. When's the last time Dak has carried a team to victory? Josh Allen is. When's the that last Buffalo time Josh offense? Allen has carried his team to victory? Same question. Week 17 against New England. In the playoffs when it mattered. Same question. It's the same debate. So it's <laughs> I like, like how you move the goal I mean, I, I, once again, he would Dak. have won against Kansas City last year if it weren't for Leslie Frazier and his 13, yeah, 13 second seconds. defense. You yeah. have all this energy for Dak. But where is that Dak, same energy for Josh Dak Allen? Tied the lead for interceptions the with four and less the games. The difference really is Dak's on America's team, and Josh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Josh Allen's on the Bills. <laughs> no, Brandon actually, has what been it wanting is, to say something. Sorry. Yeah, Perna. Here's the real difference between Dak and Josh Allen, and because I like Dak, I think he gets too much shit, and Josh Allen, the. He, one, just has a better arm. He's got just an insane arm. Uh, It wows people. It wows people. So Josh Allen has the wow factor. But the real difference is Josh Allen's legs. Josh Allen versus Dak Prescott on the ground. 762 rushing yards this year. 763 rushing yards last year. 7 TDs, 6 TDs, 8 TDs, 9 TDs, 8 TDs. That's every single year he's been in the league versus Dak 182 rushing yards, one touchdown, 146 rushing yards, one touchdown. It's Josh Allen having that as part of his game makes him the guy that everything goes through him. And Buffalo does not have a good running game around Josh Allen. They never have. They don't commit to it. Even when Brian Dable was there, even though they were more effective with Brian Dable, it's he beats you both ways. And Mm -hmm. uh, I think you can win with Dak. I don't think it's all on him. I think they just need another dynamic playmaker on offense next to CeeDee Lamb. Uh, Possibly this is Kellen Moore's uh, crap or get off the pot year as an offensive coordinator. And I don't think he's a bad offensive coordinator, but I don't think he's, I don't think the Cowboys really scare many uh, people outside of the the Vikings. (laughs) Uh, Giants beat the Vikings. Maybe the Bucks, but once again, Dak was really good in that game because Tampa Bay had been terrible all year. Their offense was atrocious. They shouldn't have even been there. I mean, Tampa Bay's defense was pretty good, but at the same time, they they laid an egg. Dak did well. And the comparison Tom had as well, he is the Tony Romo of the modern age. Like, he's pretty much him to a T. Really good quarterback, but he's not great. So like Josh Allen, for example, like, right. So he's been dealing with his injuries. What since the Jets game, like with that elbow. And I'm not yeah. even pinning it on that. But what I'm saying is what I've been saying about the Bills is like this season in particular, they have lived and died by Josh Allen, yes. right? Because you bring up the Dolphins game where he like throws like some picks, but then he throws like 40 yard bombs to Stefan Diggs and he winds up getting them back into that game. So I feel like with Dak, when the gate, like when it's all on him, it's a problem. And I, again, I don't even blame Dak for that. I blame the system for that or the offensive philosophy for that. But I don't think that you could sit here and be like, yeah, Dak's a top 10 QB. Could he be like at times? Absolutely. If you shows up like you did against the Buccaneers, 100%, but he's not consistent enough to be the guy that you pin it all on. If Tony Pollard doesn't go down, maybe that game goes differently. But again, if you're paying Ezekiel Elliott that much money, if you're paying Dak that much money, those two guys have to carry that offense and they just don't, especially Zeke. And I think like that just leads to a systemic issue with the Cowboys. And you have to consider too, where's their cap space right now? Because Tony Pollard's going to be a free agent, and I think he's gone. Because yeah, I, do you he's think gonna Zeke is going to be able to take a pay cut? Do you think Michael Gallup's going to take a pay cut? Zeke no, already- you've got to pay C.D. Lamb soon. Zeke Dalton already Schultz is gone. That, uh, he will take a pay cut. I honestly think we franchise Pollard, to be honest. I don't think we franchise Schultz this year. A lot of people are saying, let Schultz walk. Let's see what these young guys have. Mm. And I honestly think that's something that is going to be up for discussion. Where does the franchise tag come into play here? And I think Pollard... Enough.
might be franchised, to be honest. And there's oh, another question go. you need to ask Tyron Smith. He's been injury prone. He's really good, but he can't stay healthy. What do you do with him? So right He's here, getting a little too serious for my liking. What do we have here, Scooter? <laughs> what <do we> have? <laughs> All right. So I don't know uh, how long ago this bet was. I think the it was a it long was a time ago. Time. It was like yeah. it was I had summer time. Of last well, the year. Cowboys yeah. have been eliminated. I got some time in now. 2022. To, uh, to come up on my bets to uh, satisfy all my requirements. And I think for this one, the requirement was for me to dress up as an Eagle and get two people to say the Eagles are winning the Super Bowl. So this flight was fly, but it's close. It's the close. problem yeah. also with this is that I could not find the cap to blow this thing up. So we were <laughs> sitting in the gosh darn parking lot for at least 32 minutes trying to figure out how to blow this thing up as well as random people just looking at me. I could never get my head through. Let's just, just play it. Just great song. Ain't no way. How many, how do people get there? We got inflated. We got... <laughs> I had to go buy scissors to make the hole bigger for my head. This is me asking this dude where are the scissors at. So I lost the bet. Here we are. Great camera ball. Yeah. For one, two, three. The, the Eagles, Eagles are, are winning this Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't even commit. Yeah. The girl's like. <laughs> you know, the best part is it is Walmart, so like no one saw yes. it was like out of the ordinary. Right. No, like, yeah. yeah, they were just like, oh, it's Tuesday. That's the thing. It's it's pretty standard. Yeah, like you're Guy not even getting Eagles out of Walmart. Those yeah. girls you mean my did home stadium. That was at my home stadium, guys. Cool. Um, those girls did mention to me that uh, they saw me in the parking lot and were wondering what the heck I was doing. So it was perfect. Uh, I'm just glad. Like, I don't have to do that anymore. That was a just yeah, putting on a weird costume heading now. into a public uh, shopping center. Should Did you try uh, reading the instructions? Was that no. an option? Yeah. Uh huh. No, you did not have not. a pump or anything. You didn't have the pump to pump it up. There's like some part that disconnects and we didn't have that part that oh. was supposed to make it so that I, I don't know. I don't know. Remember, Tom had to mess with his pump last week. Or the yeah, week he before. messed with his pump for sure. Mm -hmm. to, for the sumo costume. Correct. <sighs> Two weeks. All right. Well, what else happened this weekend besides Giants the Cowboys? Lost. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, it wasn't only just the Cowboys that lost now. Like, let's, well, let's you talk know what? about the Giants. Okay, because y'all lost, lost. We just lost. Y'all got bodied. What were you feeling? watching this were you regretting saying that daniel jones is your guy does this affect any of that talk to me five no i don't think that really changes the fact that he's the guy he just cost himself like a lot of money you know like and that's a more powerful bargaining chip for the giants to just be like hey you know you did win a playoff game but uh what happened against the eagles how about we sit down and we give you like 20 million a year or He's something don't guy. go yeah don't go out and get ridiculous or anything you know i think the real question the real thing that is in my mind is um the market for daniel jones the open market isn't that great for him you know i guess other teams would take him but obviously the giants want him the the real problem is barkley right what's to stop a team 
like the Cowboys or the or like um, the Bills, you know, that might I mean, that that would need a top flight running back and are willing to give him three year money, Barkley, three or four year money to put them over the edge. Like the market for Barkley services is going to be way broader than um, what we need for Daniel Jones. And the other thing is if they franchise tag Barkley, he's not going to accept that. He might pull a Le'Veon Bell. Like it's Barkley's responsibility for him and his agent to get him a multi-year deal. So it could be some situation where we have to pony up the money for Barkley and then franchise Jones because that might be just more convenient. You just draft but, a running back. This is yeah, a good running or, back or, draft just, class. or just <laughs> let Barkley walk. Honestly. That, or that, that, or that you could hurt. even like – Put in like uh, you have a fascinating off season coming up. Five. You can take this in a lot of different ways regarding Jones or Saquon or Jones or Saquon or both. Or mm -hmm. I mean, you can even get rid of both if you I, really think of it. it. It depends what they feel and how their cap situation is moving forward. They were trying to get a deal done during the season and it didn't. It just came. It stalled out, yeah, yeah. and so they're mm -hmm. like, "We'll wait till the off season," which just helped Saquon Barkley because he was a stud this year. He yeah, like he went back to form. Yeah, and that's going to be tough because maybe he he priced himself out of coming back to New York, which is entirely possible. Yeah. But you should never be upset about losing a running back. No, when you lose a running back, like they don't go on to have another ten years of dominance. It just doesn't happen right. that way. AP. Uh, yeah, look at McCaffrey. They, he's he's not even with his team that gave him that second deal because they had to trade. They had to dump him off because he was hurt two years in a row after they gave him the money. So it's it's just. There's such a liability that I won't I will be upset like when when Odell Beckham was traded, obviously. But uh losing Barkley is not gonna be as hard as say losing your guy that you've invested four years in now. Um so yeah, Daniel Jones is coming back. They'll work something out, but I'd like them both back, but yeah. We got we got bodied too, by the way. That game was tough to watch. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I'm I'm talking smack. Like the only way that the only thing that saved the weekend was Cowboy fan tears because if y'all would have advanced and us lose, like I would have been in in an all <laughs> NFC East while we're out on the outside looking in. Hmm. Who would, would you rather the win, San Francisco or the Eagles? Five. Oh, I cannot stand to see the all the Eagles fan hate that I got just made the it more intense and more bitter. Like you never want your rivals. Like my dad used to say, "Son, you got to root for the team that beat you because you want to say that you got beat by the best." Well, f that mess. No, uh -uh. Yep. I want to see him fail. Uh -uh. You will not celebrate, and I will not enjoy your success if you beat me. Uh -uh. Hell no. I will not say I got lost by the I'll I will say we got we got beat by a sus team and we beat ourselves. They didn't beat us. <laughs> yeah, but that was depressing and sad all at once, but kind of knew it was coming. Eagles are really good. You gotta watch now, out for them. They're really good. It wasn't just the Cowboys and Giants who were losing playoff games this weekend, or this past weekend, rather. The Bills actually. Lost as well. Oh. Mm -hmm. Brutal. Play day, guys, massive egg. Did you guys perhaps perchance catch that game? And what are you guys' thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. um, um, my question is, where do the Bills go it. from here? Because at the end of the day, that was your shot. That was probably your best shot. Bills and are yeah, – it, sorry, get it, it, It's all right. I mean – you needed Von Miller. You brought him in. And yeah. at the end of the day, I don't know if a Von Miller would have even won you this game with the holes in your secondary and defensive scheme, with the over-reliance on Josh Allen on the offense, with the way you're very one-dimensional. You still have a lot of holes in your structure and scheming, even coaching perhaps. My question is, you are nowhere closer to winning a Super Bowl and this was supposed to be your revenge year, you know, for yes. the whole the, the coin mm -hmm. toss narrative, mm -hmm. the big plays, the offensive weapons. Like you, you had that one big piece that was supposed to push you over the top. And now you have Miami sniffing behind you. You got Jacksonville coming in. Kansas City is still going to be good. You have a bunch of suitors that are going to come in and just start taking over the top of the AFC East. And with Josh Allen's health, 
you never know what's going to happen, especially with his physical play style. I, I, I don't know where you go from here. I, I really don't. Yeah, Bills are – I mean, it's just such a drastic difference in off seasons because – and I was talking about this with Perna on GPS. Like, I feel like collectively as a nation – we gave the Bills a pass for their loss yes. against the Chiefs because we we're like, oh, it's the overtime rules. You know, it's the coin and blah, 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 blah. Not to mention, like, their defense wasn't good. It allowed them to get in I, field goal range with 13 seconds left. It allowed Holmes to march down the field in yeah, overtime. Exactly. So, That's what I always blamed it on. Yeah. So, like, it's that. And then they go out and they get Von Miller. They're Super Bowl favorites. They go and address the secondary in the draft. Like, they, they get the pieces that they need. But then, again – it's a matter of injuries. It's a matter of just like play style. It's a matter of, oh, like they got James Cook. They're going to commit to the run. They never committed to the run because no. it's an organization that's just not who they, it's similar to the Cowboys in that sense of like, they have a QB who can sling it happy. And they also have like, you know, these wide receivers Diggs got a four year extension before the year started. So it's a matter of like, they don't run the ball. They're one dimensional. And if you get after Josh Allen enough, like eventually they're going to make mistakes. So, like, that optimism is not there. And on top of that, like, look at the Jets. They get Nathaniel Hackett. Let's just say if, because it's a big if, if they get a guy like Aaron Rodgers, like, that team is going to be, like, plug and play, and they're going to be better. Mm-hmm. You know, and they'll be better just because Brees Hall is going to be there. Who knows what's going on with the Dolphins? But, yeah, the East is going to get more competitive. So it's going to be difficult. Speaking for of Aaron Rodgers, are we going to address is, – is he really gone? No. <laughs> like, like why so, is all these trade rumors just popping up everywhere like, same thing happened last year uh, but, but in this it seems to have more legs this year why? for some why? reason because it he because he played so badly that's why so, so, like it might be the right move to let like, move on from him so that now literally he said that verbatim on tuesday on mcafee he's just like i there the packers have not given me any indication that they want to move on from me it's literally up to me if I want to come back and play football. That's the first thing that needs to be decided. And he goes, because I didn't win MVP this year, did now these conversations are happening. So, like, it, could it happen? One million percent. But it's it a foregone conclusion? No, I think it's also filling the void while we wait and nobody wants to wait. Quick scenario, Tom. Two first and two second round picks for Aaron Rodgers. Do you take the deal? Yeah, I don't think we're offered that, though. No, but I'm just saying as that. hypothetically. Oh, yeah. Hypothetically. Yeah. What about one second? No, How but you so like I literally go rounder. through this entire scenario. Like I have a video coming out after this. Like I go through the scenario. I think like what we could get because we should have, if we were going to trade him, we should have done it last year because that was at the height of his value. Two time MVP. I think the Packers organization was, were not in a place to say, Oh God, the backlash we're going to get. If we just trade the two time, like back to back MVP is going to be a problem. So like now we're stuck. And now the Packers, like, they got to make decisions. They got to figure out Jordan Love because they have to say, hey, are we claiming his fifth-year option or no? And again, like, Aaron Rodgers, even if we trade him, is going to be $40 million on the cap. So, like, we're eating that because that's all backloaded contract stuff. So you have to get find somebody to, one, who wants Aaron Rodgers, which I think is a good amount of people in the league. But on top of that, Raiders. they need to be willing to take the contract. We're still going to pay the 40 mil, but he's going to be owed, like, $60 million. And on top of that, like, the draft capital to give it up. in a in a free agency where Jimmy Garoppolo will be a free agent who I think could fit really well with the jets. And then you have Tom Brady who's still there, who also will be a free agent. Don't have to give up any capital for him. Derek Carr, I know, you know, much different talent wise, but <laughs> I'm just saying like there, you have to figure out if you Derek want to Carr's catching strays out here. Listen, I'm not Derek saying Jimmy Carr is a poor man's Dak Prescott. <laughs> yes. Uh, but like, that's honestly, insulting to Derek. I yeah. don't think, you know, Jimmy Garoppolo just makes sense because the scheme fit with Sala. Like, that's why I think, like, that makes a really good fit. But if they want to go over the top, like, they could bring in Rodgers. Because, listen, the Jets and 49ers should be, like, a Brady and Rodgers dream. You have good defenses and you have young weapons. Like, that's what you want. The only thing I would say about the Jets is, like, they need to fix their O-line a bit. They did have some injuries. So, like, that didn't help. But... I feel like that's the big thing they need. Like the Jets have the 13th overall pick. I could see them saying, yeah, we'll give you the 13th. We'll give you like a second rounder, which I think is like the 43rd. I mean, the Jets won how many yeah. games with a garbage roster? Like just a couple things go right. They get Makai, Makai Becton healthy for a whole year. Like they could, they could That'll yeah, never happen. do some damn. I know. I'm that's true. Of, uh, QBs. 
I'm interested to understand what you guys think the 49ers are going to do in the offseason, especially if Brock Purdy does actually perform well, maybe even makes it to a Super Bowl as a rookie. Where do they go from here? Here's the thing, though. Battle out 20-year contract for Brock Purdy. Anything else is a slap in the face. Here's the thing, though. They got a su- they got to a Super Bowl two years ago with Garoppolo, and they're casting him off like, you know, like uh, a second skin. Like, they're getting rid of him so fast. They, if they, they win a Super Bowl year. with Purdy, like, <laughs> maybe they lock him up. But he's I'm got some. I'm talking about Trey what? Lance. I'm talking oh. about what happens to Trey Lance. But that's the thing. They don't have to make any decision in the offseason. Like, don't. they are in the greatest position ever. That's why I never understood the Tom Brady rumors to San Francisco. They have two guys on their rookie deals. Have them battle it out in camp. You start Brock Purdy and be like, yeah, sure, he does well. Until he doesn't, then you put on Trey Lance. Like, who cares? Like, Trey they are Lance in the cares. best. That's who cares. Trey yeah. Lance is who cares. Then win the job. That, that's it. Then you win the job. Win but the job in think, camp. Here's my question, Tom. You say win the Don't job. Don't get hurt. Here's my question. How does management say this guy won 12, 13 Super Bowl, won a Super Bowl for us? How does management say, we know Brock Purdy just did all of this. But because uh-huh. we drafted this guy a little bit further ahead, he uh-huh. actually won the battle in uh, in camp, so he's starting. Despite yeah. Brock Purdy winning all of this. I, you then think you have Nick Foles as your backup. Like, Nick Foles won a Super Bowl, then he went to yeah. Jacksonville, and he and sucked. they made the wrong and, move. And he moved around. Like, that's what I'm saying. Then you have a Super Bowl winning backup, and God forbid Trey Lance, with his play style, the whole nine yards, gets hurt. Then you have Brock Purdy in there. Like, I do not understand, like, why this is such a big problem. The 49ers are in such an enviable, like, position. Any team would be like, oh, man, we have too many good quarterbacks on the roster and we don't pay them a lot. What do we do? Have them battle it out in camp, see who moves forward, and do what's best for the franchise. That's it. Keep Jimmy G and sell male shirtless calendars as well. Extra profit there margin it is. coming in. Mm-hmm. Brock Purdy is the next Tom Brady. It's possible. People want to throw that term around a lot. That's a but this term. is the only guy drafted further down the board than Tom. Second, he's playing better than Tom Brady ever did in his first go around in the playoffs. Uh, way better. Way. Go look at old Tom Brady yeah. in the first round of the playoffs. He was dog shit, and they still <laughs> won the Super Bowl. Okay? Uh-huh. It was horrible. No. Let's see. Brock, Brock Purdy did. Miles ahead of him. He doesn't have the physical skills like Tom Brady, which is going to benefit him in the long run. Kyle Shanahan knows that. It's the the match. It's the perfect pair. Like Brady and Belichick was this guy. They give him a long-term deal. You don't even think about starting Trey Lance. You trade him for more draft picks. You keep Jimmy G on as your backup to Brock Purdy because he'll run the exact same style of offense that Brock Purdy's running. And then you use those other draft picks for more offensive weapons. You have so many offensive weapons that you can't even use them all. And uh, maybe trade those for more draft. Remember, Drew Bledsoe had to bail Tom Brady out that first playoff. Yep. Still again. Mm -hmm. I remember that. Who's Brock Brady's backup, by the way? Right. Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson, the legendary veteran journeyman of the. If Purdy gets hurty, they are. Yeah, because I. I tried to make a joke Dirty. that the Niners should just keep injuring their quarterbacks because the backup's like always better. <laughs> How did that joke go? Veteran yeah. of the United Football <laughs> League, the but then NAS I was like, oh, it's Josh. The XFL. Josh. I think they've Josh reached. Josh. They, yeah, they've they've reached speaking of the great rock quarterbacks, bottom. there is one team that we have yet to get to who has advanced for the fifth year in a row to the conference championship. Mm-hmm. Pat Mahomes leading the Kansas City Chiefs. What are we thinking? For the Chiefs' chances here going into this uh, conference championship game here, where did you guys get a chance to watch this playoff game with Mahomes? No. H- how's Mahomes' health looking the like? Ankle. Is he doing well in practice? Dude, he's freaking because- like skipping around in practice. He literally, legitimately, he's like skipping around. He's like doing all the stretches. I'm like, you got to be sick. Honestly, <laughs> they put in enough Toradol in that guy to knock out, <laughs> I bet you, any money. It's insane. I- I was impressed with the Jags even hanging around that game. Like, obviously, yeah. I they think were a fumble KC... away from giving the Chiefs uh, a run at the end. Just to, yeah, 
It was like a freak fumble that just pops out of Jamal Agnew's hands. And if you listen to the broadcast, oh, the punt? like, yeah, yeah. that Chiefs force a fumble. It's like, nobody forced a fumble. Yeah, just, it was it was at the goal stupid line. Stupid football is slippery. Yeah. Man. It, it's one of those ones that you're going to, like, regret. But at the end of the day, the Jags weren't ready. I mean, it's a heck of a season for them. You yeah. have your quarterback. You have your structure. Doug Peterson's the right coach at the right time. I don't know if he's going to be, like, the long-term answer. But right now... I think you're in a very enviable situation. Yeah, and I Jags think you can run the, the AFC the South for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's no one in there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. The the Titans are obviously headed like down it, this it's way. Peyton Manning's Colts. Mm-hmm. That's how it, it might be. Yeah, if Colts you, are in disarray. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they might be nah. Jeff Saturday. You, you like, hey, Jip, you should do it. Do it. Do it for the last. Oh my God, the fact that they're actually entertaining <laughs> again. I said the first question should be, "Did you ever blow a thirty-three point lead and a half?" Yes, by that's it. That's the only question that you asked. If everyone else who said no, you're good. I don't get that. But speaking of Frank Reich, also hired as uh, the Panthers head coach, Carolina. Mm-hmm. So someone's yeah. gonna get Steve Wilkes, and like he's, I'm, 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 I'm biased, but like I really like Steve Wilkes. I think he did a really nice job with them too. Yeah, I think you know they'll get a coordinator get? position. You know who they're uh, not gonna get? Dan Quinn. That is who they're sure. not going oh. to get because Dan Quinn has come out. And I think I've said this in a previous stream. I'm not sure, but I think I said Dan Quinn staying because Jerry Jones is going to pay this man like a head coach and he just has to be a defensive coordinator. And today it was announced Dan Quinn is staying. And I think that is what most Cowboys fans were feel f- fearful of the most. Do you not just Kellen love more leaving? <laughs> We're okay if Kellen Moore leaves. Uh, not certain players leaving. We're okay if certain players leave. But Dan Quinn was what we were worried about the most. He's staying. He's solidified. That defense is going to have the same guy running it. This is an elite defense. Let's add some pieces in the offseason. It is elite, Tom. We're going to get another lockdown corner. Buddy. And... Uh, it can be, but if they're not consistent, you can't look at your season and tell me they were consistent on defense. There's no, no way. Dude. There was a stretch. Dude, where Gardner we were... Minshew almost destroyed you guys. Like there was a there's... stretch where it decreased. But it's... I would say if you average all, <laughs> if you average all the games, look at all the games collectively. Put it over seventeen and divide. You will get a great defense uh, that played this season. Yeah. I'm what right. what happened when Trayvon Diggs he had like a easy interception on Purdy? What happened when that happened? It went literally right through his hands. Yeah. Did you see that? I thought he was the guy plays, that gets burned and covered. Plays but later, makes the interception. Christian McCaffrey walks in. It, Diggs mm-hmm. intercepts that. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm talking way. I was actually shocked by that. Stream. I was I was. Did you see him talking about it on the sideline? No, no I did not. Oh, it's hilarious. Diggs is like, because I I don't know what teammate was asking him. He's like, what happened there? Diggs was like, I did. The ball wasn't supposed to be there. It just hit me in the gut. I didn't even know it was coming. Wow. He's like, it was just such a bad. It was basically it was such a bad throw. It wasn't like supposed to to hit me. But you know what they did see coming. You know what they did see coming? Got him. Got him. Oh, that's Mm -hmm. what we call a segue. There are four teams left, okay, but only four. one can play in the big t- big game. Teams have gone through ups and downs since September. Now they're on the cusp of glory. That's not enough to get your blood pumping. DraftKings today's sponsor is giving all new customers a winning offer. Yes. All new customers have to do is sign up for DraftKings using our code Clickbait. C L I C K B A I T. And bet $5 on either playoff game, and you're instantly going to get $200 in bonus bets. Now you can use those bonus bets to try some same-game parlays where you combine multiple bets from one game, like which team will win and by how much, for a shot at even bigger winnings. And if you ain't got the mobile sports betting in your state, don't worry. You can get in on all the fun. With DraftKings Daily Fantasy. Again, you use our code clickbait link in the description when you sign up. Five dollars on either game, at least five dollars. Could do six dollars. Five seven foot long. Could do nine. And you're gonna get two hundred dollars in free bet or bonus bets. Bonus bets instantly. With our code clickbait. 
I feel like we haven't talked enough great. about the Cowboys. Is oh, people McCarthy understood that now? coming I from the least like... knowledgeable football talker here. I feel Hope like we haven't talked enough that. about this. Final play, it looks like barring a penalty. Prescott over the middle of the turpin. Gets smoked right away, and that'll do it, the 49ers. And on the last play, Cowboys needed a miracle. Didn't have it on this thing. Uh, honestly, why are you going to get tackled, bro? Throw no, the ball I, up in the air if you know you're going to get tackled. Just throw the ball up. It's because you had two blitzers with one blocking lineman. That's why he had to throw it high. I'm talking about and Turpin. You also no, no, you talk about Turpin. Like, why didn't he just yeah. fumble it? Like, why didn't he just ball. chuck fumble it? Fumble the ball. Yeah. Do because something. he had still had to adjust. He didn't see, feel the pressure. Fumble the ball. Behind. We could have. You got to admit, they though, that they. Why did they that play after the Niners called the timeout and realized. Yeah, yeah, they, they still went with it. Like, why I did you just go to a standard hill man? If I ever yeah. meet Kellen Moore, I promise you I'm going to ask him, yo, what what was supposed to happen on this play? What? I thought you said you knew. Because I honestly think it was supposed to be a screen on that side that was then thrown back to. Remember when the Tennessee Titans had that? Throwback, yeah, the miracle. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. I honestly yeah. believe that that's kickoff. what that play was setting up. Just, I don't it think was setting even it up. If you executed the first half of the play, like you still weren't getting yeah, in the end zone. Was, You're gonna have to lateral. I got your Turpin way. took a shot too. Jeez. Yeah, and so did Ezekiel. Ezekiel got pancaked. Oh like his name was Aunt Sarah. I'm honestly, I think over. any of us would I'm done just, uh, just as good as Zeke. I would have. We would have all been pancaked. I would have rather seen a hidden ball trick or something like Statue something. Of <laughs> Statue what of Liberty the play. Heck? Yeah. Why is it every season our season ends in a stupid play? Like the dumbest play of all every season. What the heck is going on, bro? It's a great question. Why don't you try to answer that, Scooter? Maybe yeah. because it's your organization. No, mm -hmm. it is because or of our offensive coordinator. Uh well, they want Mike McCarthy. Jerry Jones said he wants Mike McCarthy around as long as Tom Landry yeah. was around. Yeah. Who said uh, that? Did you not see that? Oh, no, that literally came out today. It said... Cowboys coach Mike McCarthy said that Jerry Jones has told him he wants McCarthy to coach here in Dallas as long oh, as Tom he's Landry lying. did. He's you should have to dress like Tom Landry. Then. Jerry did not oh, say yeah, that. Were, no, Jerry Jones definitely says that. He loves his stars. It's literally one of the Cowboys family. reporters for the Dallas Morning News. I want head coaches to be back in suits. Okay, well, you know, you have to have, Jerry Jones they have to be designed a lot of by night. That don't end up happening. I, Brandon Perna's uh, impersonation of Jerry Jones gives me life, so... I'm Jerry Jones. <laughs> okay, you guys want to glory <laughs> hole? Want to preview these playoff games? Real yes, quick? let's mm. preview. I, I have one more question to ask. Brett Maher, <laughs> wonderful oh. Brett Maher. When your own state governor is coming out saying he could kick better than <laughs> Brett Maher, and he is apparently. <laughs> so the funny thing that was, is like a lot of people were like trying to give him a pass because. That kick got blocked, but he kicked it. He was going the wrong the, way. Yeah, yeah. That was I, going I wide that. left. It's just like, bruh. Jerry Jones said he was vindicated. Something foolish always happens with this team. Like, not even like a little bit foolish. It's like, so this man set a record, a NFL record, no kicker ever. You understand what I'm saying? No kicker Never. since the sport of football has begun. No kicker has missed four extra points in a game. That's Brett Maher. He's the only one because Making everyone history. else got I think, I Cody Parkey did. after two or three. Look, I don't, I don't even know. The, the other know thing. I wish the I other had thing. the answers. I don't have the answers. I don't uh, have his, his yips ultimately affected the outcome of the game a little they bit did. when the Cowboys got into Niners territory, precious yards, and you had to go for it because of Maher's ineptness. Mm -hmm. Now, the you know, the score, the final score was what? Set six point, seven point difference. Those three yeah. points would have mattered, but instead of going for a drive to tie the game, 
they had to get a touchdown to tie it. And those little things, those tiny, it's like you ever do like accident chain research or whatever, where it's, it's those tiny things that add up. And it goes back to what Tom said, organization organizational problems like jerry jones is like he made a long field goal so he's vindicated that's great Mm -hmm. if you could hit a 50 yard field goal but if you can't hit an extra point that's kind of an issue like but here you i I really don't want to talk about the cowboys anymore but scooter you mentioned like we're gonna pay dan quinn as a head coach but keep him as dc you're paying a running back as an rb1 who's not your rb1 you have an rb2 who you're gonna need to pay rb1 money for him to stay how many positions are we just going to pay two people to do one job? It just, it like, that's what I mean. Organizationally, it doesn't seem like it's. Yeah. Like, uh, like I said, there are a lot of things I would have done different. If I were GM, Amari Cooper would still be on the team. Uh, and I honestly think if Amari Cooper was on the team, a lot of things would have gone differently in that game or over the course of the season. Because what a lot of people don't understand is, when you just have one threat, when you just have CD, defenses can key in on one person. They can say, you know what, know we're gonna yeah. we're gonna stop mm-hmm. CD. We're gonna blanket him so that he do- is a non-factor. That yeah, didn't happen yeah. this game, but he was able to get his yards. But I'm saying, you when you have an Amari Cooper and a CD, that frees up so much for the QB. And you can see this play on teams like the Eagles, where they have a Devontae. Yeah, Green yeah. That, I mean, that AJ was tough Brown. to watch. You, yeah. Every you time can see they them beat on teams us like the one Bengals, way, they beat us another way. It was, it was rough. They got uh, T. Higgins and all these people. So it's just like. All right, who are we going to see in the Super Bowl? Dak out. It cannot be all, all right, on Dak. I guarantee if but all you're these paying other him like it's the same receiver core that Dak Prescott has, they're not putting up the same numbers. They're just not. Hmm. So we got to help Dak out. But do you see, Scooter, that you're paying him like he is? Tom, and I'm saying I have, this. From, I have been seeing all of this. Aaron I Rodgers. have seen this. I have lived it. So this it's an has organizational been my life experience. issue. It's an organizational issue. That's what yes. I'm saying. They're paying Aaron Rodgers like he's still a guy. I know. Guess what? It's going to continue to be that way until forever. So we're going to have to get by that some way. There it is. <laughs> there we're going to have to, we're gonna have to overcome. And we can. Mm-hmm. And we All right. Who's going, who, who's going to be in the Super Bowl? Let's just go around. Eagles, Bengals. Tom. Tom, you're saying who? Eagles, Bengals. Eagles, Bengals. Gosh. You saying the kitty is gonna go me out, Brandon? Yeah. Eagles, who are we Chiefs. gonna see? Eagles, Eagles Chiefs. Chiefs. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I, I really want to take the 49ers, but uh, Eagles just look. They just look dangerous. They mm-hmm. they just they can get you so many ways. Yeah. They'll, they'll get you. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go Eagles. Uh, Eagles Chiefs. 49ers. Think... Ooh. Cause look. I don't, I don't, even if I thought it was the Eagles, I would still say 49ers. Just, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I don't think let... it's going to be the Eagles, though. Like, legitimately, I think the 49ers got something cooking. And I don't. I think they're going to limit the big plays on the Eagles. So I got 49ers. Okay. And I don't even know, honestly. But the way Joe Burrow has been playing recently, Joe Burrow is the best QB right now in the league, in the NFL. It's Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. He's number one. And because of that, I think they make it to the Super Bowl this year. Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow's the same quarterback every single week. He's like the third best QB in the NFL every single week. Every week. He's really, every really week. good. He's never uh, worse than that. And he's just never, he's like statistically. I really like the Bengals because of how they just shut down the Bills offense. Like they just were stingy and, uh, I think the Chiefs are in trouble there. I think Joe Burrow's playing out of his mind. He has been since he was at LSU. The only thing that can slow him down is a torn ACL. So he's that that one's good to go. Now, the question is with the Niners and the Eagles. Uh, the Eagles, you know, the Niners are going to defend. They're going to score, you know, but the Eagles will get probably 21, 24 points. 
my question is, is can the Niners score 21, 24 points with Brock Purdy? And I don't think that's really um, a thing. You know, he only scored 19 against the Cowboys, which is, I mean, whatever. Uh, I like the Eagles and the Kitty Goes Meow crew. So there we have it. You First already counted down? The Chiefs, they run Patrick Mahomes. 30-yard mm-hmm. gallop to prove how okay is angle. And that's the opening play. It's a QB <laughs> yeah. draw. Yep. Yeah, yeah, like his entire smart. leg falls off and he's still like hobbling to the end zone. It's, it's really like Greg Jennings in that Madden play where he's like, oh, yeah, he's he put the team like on that. his back. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just like Greg Jennings. I can definitely see that. Yeah. Damn Just a flesh wound. One of the hardest right. hidden safeties in the league. Here we go, yeah. Come on now. Mm. Yeah. 2019. 17, 16, 15, 4. You tuned in because you wanted to see Scooter cry. That's why you tuned in. It didn't even have to rhyme. That's why, I mean, it's on the thumbnail. It really was just kind of blatantly there. Um, you know, it's just, this is, it happens. You know, sometimes your team falls short and you just got to laugh at them and make a living. <laughs> as soon as they lose, say it, tell everyone that they're going to be in the Super Bowl. Uh, I made $198.63. 108.98 over here. Thank you, everyone. 113, 113. All right. Well, uh, I'm at 323.25. Yes. Um, Oh, no. I'm at 814. Let's go. (laughs) Man, you should have to go back to that Walmart. (laughs) (laughs) I'm thinking $800 at Walmart. (laughs) I'm thinking a live dissection breakdown of that final play. In excruciating See? detail. Is that in a video on next gen stat? Yes. Hold on. Let me look what, at next um, gen stat. I was also thinking, just throwing it out there, because he has done this before, but I think depending on the winner on Sunday of the NFC championship game, he has to dress as a cheerleader of the team that wins. Because it's either the 49ers Ooh. who beat him or it's the Eagles, which is just even better. Oh, that so one's that's spicy. like a repeat. We, we need like to change that it up. One. <laughs> We got I think change. he has to break down that Zeke play and the 14 second uh, play from mm. the season before. Yes. And determine which play is actually worse. That, that works too. <laughs> Honestly, mm. Scooter, I hope you get used to this play. You're going to be seeing it a lot over the next week. Final play looks like barring a penalty. Prescott over the middle to interpret. Gets smoked right away. And that'll do it. The 49er. And on the last play. Ooh. Ooh, and you got an extra nine. More. Nine, nine, nine. Oh, dang. <clears throat> mm. Scooter, everybody lo- loves misery, brother. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. So Whoa. are we saying a uh, play That's by good. play, though? Oh, oh, they've been talking about this for a while. <laughs> Is it time? Oh. <laughs> Actually, that might be it. I, I mean, think that's it. I think yeah. That's pretty damn great. Do we time. put a five, five yeah. minute, five I minute vote for minimum? That. Jack, I vote actually, that. you know what? That's better than the Zeke play. Yeah. Let's go. I vote yeah. for that. I vote Everyone for that. raise your hand. I, grip. Yep. Absolutely. Eyes have it. Yep. Unanimous. Oh, yeah. Okay. How many oh, yeah. get? We're done. You, yeah. You can be here for a while. Every single <laughs> playoff. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We can Let's take go. the day off. Oh, yeah. Five, five. What do you got coming out? <sighs> uh, I have a video on what's underneath the pitcher's mound, and it's really interesting. Do you know that underneath the pitcher's mound, there's an entire room underneath there no, in, in some fields? Ooh. Yeah. There's an entire room like that you can go down. Like there's a there's a hatch on the pitcher's mound, and you can get down underneath there. I'm not going to tell you why, though. I'm not going to tell you why. Is Jimmy Hoffa buried underneath there? He is. It's good. No. Was... We got coming out. I got a sponsored video with the NBA. It's NBA nice. Rivalry Week this week. So nice. be on the lookout for that. We got a NBA free agent or NBA trade deadline video coming up soon, sometime next week. And uh, we're going to be reacting to these uh, these games this weekend as well. So be on the lookout. There you go, Perna. Uh, what I got tomorrow? The uh, 2006 Chargers. <laughs> mm. Was that the Bang. team that went 14 and two? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. And the Marlon McCree fumble. Yeah. Yep. 
Drink a short or something. Well, I got what? Hater's Guide to the NHL Eastern Conference that came out a couple hours ago. Western Ooh. Conference should be out Saturday. And then Hater's Guide to the Super Bowl, probably Tuesday, Wednesday next week. It's a big go. week for Tree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, might Giants. Not wake up at 10. I know, right? Crazy. Giants fan reaction to the season came out right before clickbait doing an Aaron Rodgers to the Jets video, uh, what that would look like uh, at a couple hours. I'll come out. Okay. All right, folks. Looks like we made it. (laughs) Appreciate you. See you next week. Bye. See you next week. We need to close.